Hi, welcome to Doxonomy today. We're just doing a short video here to talk about intelligent translation. At Doxonomy, we believe as global organizations have to interact with data all over the world, it's important to be able to intelligently handle the various different documents and the languages that they may be processed in. In order to do that, we made it very, very simple. I'm going to start out with a real quick slide here and just explain how we do what we do. When you take a file that comes into Doxonomy, regardless of what language that it happens to be in, we send it through our intelligence process, which enriches the data. We send it to our translation engine, and we actually do a detection to determine what language the document is in. If it's in English, we store it in English. However, uh, if it's in some other language, we do a rendition of English of that on the fly. And we return that back so that it can be further enriched by our natural language processing engine, our auto classification, our entity analysis, all the things that Doxonomy is great at. Uh, we just are able to leverage that with that language. And all of this is stored within the repository in the index for searching. Now, the real power comes from the end user standpoint. When you're an end user uh, and you're in the application and you're wanting to do a search, say in your native language, let's say you want to search in Spanish or maybe in German, uh, and you want to get results back from the system, we take that fully into account and we automatically transcribe that and we allow that search to occur across the entire repository. The beauty of this is we return all documents, no matter what language that you type in. If the hit is there, it gets returned. Um, we also can do translation on the fly. So when you get your result back, because our core system is based on English, uh, we'll return the English result. But you can, on the fly, real time, translate that into any language that you want. We support over 104 languages to date. Uh, and it is very easy to do and very uh, simple to process. So what I'd like to do is just jump into a demo right away and let's take a look at what that looks like right now. So we'll start our search out by uh, searching on uh, a word for a fictitious document that we have in our system here called Awesome Drug. Um, and we'll go ahead and select that and do search. So as we see here, we get one document back in our search results and we can quickly click on that document to view it. So from within the viewer, we'll see uh, the English version of this document. And in this case, it was an English document. But just to show the simplicity of how quickly we can tr uh, translate documents, let's say we want to view this document in French. So we can scroll down to all the different languages we support, choose French and say view. And we'll see that we transcribe that document on the fly into French. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Now, let's say we want to do a little bit more complex search. So let's click on search here, go back to our search screen. And in this case, we're going to search on a Spanish word, uh, the basically the Spanish translation for, uh, uh, I'll paste that in there, uh, for uh, expiration date. And we'll go ahead and execute that search. Now, we're searching in Spanish. And we get a set of results back, set of documents back to the system as we see here. And we'll go ahead and we'll click on uh, the My Spanish Meds document here, or My Meds. We'll see that we get the English translation that was done on the fly when this document was uploaded. You'll also notice here that if we click on uh, the view and open this up in the viewer, you'll see that the document itself, the native document that was put into the system was all in Spanish. So that's very, you know, very cool. However, another thing that's really kind of interesting around this is that this particular document was uh, an image only PDF. So it was actually scanned in and we extracted that image and we OCR. We actually do OCR in the language as well. Uh, so we can understand uh, many different languages in our OCR engine and we're able to understand that. So that's another powerful aspect of this. However, let's say for instance, um, I searched on this in Spanish, but let's say I want to review this in, uh, let's say German. I can choose my German language here, click view, and again, immediately translate the document on the fly into German. So again, another very powerful aspect. Now, 
let's say I want to search for that same document, but I'm searching uh, in Japanese. I'm in Japan and, and I'm going to use Japanese characters. Now, I'm not an expert in this, but I'll paste these ja Japanese characters in, which basically mean the same thing, expiration date, uh, and I could execute that search. And we'll see here, uh, the results come back again, and there's my Spanish document, the first one that we opened you know, earlier, and it was found by searching on using these Japanese characters. So again, part of how we do our searching, very powerful. Now, let's, let's go a little bit deeper. Uh, let's use our question and answering. Um, we've got documents in here from various different locations that we found out on, on the web. Um, so we're going to ask a question in this case. Uh, we're going to ask that question in German. Uh, we're going to say basically what this is saying is, when, uh, when did Prince Philip uh, visit uh, UCB? Uh, so I'm actually asking a question of the data. So I'll go ahead and execute that query. And as we can see here quickly, we get the results back. We see we have an answer here uh, that it was on December 3rd, 2004. So we actually got an answer. Now we searched in German, that was a, a German phrase. And if we open this document up, we'll see the automatic English translation that we did of that. If we look at the source document here, we'll see that it was actually originally uploaded in Dutch. So this document was actually a Dutch document uh, that was stored in the system. Now, one last thing that I wanna kinda highlight on here and why the power of how we do translation is so important is if we look at the similar area here, we look at the similar analysis, we'll see these other documents because of the context of what's in that document are important. Now, these are all English documents, but let's go ahead and let's click on this one here and bring it up and open it. Now, this was a, a, another document. It was English originally, and it was uh, an image only uh, PDF again that we OCR'd. But what I wanna look at in the similarity again, as we've opened up this English document, is here's our Dutch document. It comes up again from a similarity standpoint as the second most similar document to the context of the one that we have open. And again, it doesn't matter. This document was originally uploaded in Dutch. Nobody entered or translated any data. How we process the information on the back end and provide intelligence is what brought this to be. So very, very powerful concept, something that we just wanted to share with you today. Uh, we hope you find that interesting and we look forward to talking to you more in the future about doxonomy. Thank you.